Hello everyone and welcome to today's session, Understanding the Difference Between Digital Security and Data Privacy. I'm Shilpa Goswami and I'll be your host for the day. We would like to go over a few house rules for our attendees. The session will be in listen only mode and will last for an hour out of which the last 10 minutes will be dedicated to Q&A. If you have any questions during the webinar to organizers or our speakers, use the Q&A window. Also, if you face any audio video challenges, please check your internet connection or you may log out and log in again. An important announcement for certificate of attendance. Participants need to attend the complete webinar to qualify for the certificate. Also, should fill in the survey form, which will be sent in the attendees thank you email and answer correctly the three multiple choice questions based on the webinar. The certificate of attendance shall be sent to you within the next five to seven working days after the event. Our speaker for today's session, Faisal, is a cybersecurity scholar with over 18 years of experience delivering high value projects in the cybersecurity and payment technology space. He has published research, six research papers in the International Journal of Computer Science and Information Security. He holds a master degree in cybersecurity from EC Council University and is currently pursuing a doctorate in cybersecurity leadership. He has been a key influencer and contributor to the creation of technology ecosystems that facilitate organizational excellence by leveraging innovative thinking across geographies. Faisal is an adept data center expert who has effectively led solid and resilient team with a total project portfolio of more than the USD billion. Without any further delay, I would hand over the session to you, Faisal. Thank you. Thank you, Shilpa, for the introduction. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on understanding difference between digital security and data privacy. In this webinar, we will discuss the concept of digital security and data privacy, their differences, and why they are important in today's digital world. Uh, there is always a confusion in between both terms. We are using digital security and the data privacy. So let's start first. Let's define the terms digital security and data privacy. What are the digital security and data privacy? Digital security refers to the protection of data asset, or digital assets such as computers, network, mobile devices from unauthorized access, used or theft. It involves various measures such as firewalls, antivirus software, and encryption to prevent attacks and to ensure the safety and integrity of the digital data. So with the evolution of the technology, confusion in new age terms is natural. However, not understanding them properly at right time could lead to unintentional breach of data privacy laws, fines and lawsuits for business corporates from regular regulators, data breaches, theft of information and other misuse of data can lead to worse uh, reputational loss and so many other corporate losses. So in a nutshell, data security, which is the subdivision of digital security and data privacy aren't the same things. Uh, data privacy on the other hand, uh, we will discuss in detail what are the data privacy, what is the definition in coming slides. Uh, but let's start with digital security. Digital security is the process used to protect your online identity. So anything on digital, this is where digital security come into the picture. Collective terms of use of multiple resources, as I explained earlier, uh, could be used to protect your online identity, data and other assets using tools like web services, antivirus software, smartphones and cards, biometrics, secure personal devices are the few of the examples. Uh, there are many more anything related to the digital landscapes uh, coming into the digi uh, digital security uh, perspective. Now let's discuss the what is data privacy. So data privacy on the other end refers to protecting personal data such as names, addresses, and financial information from being accessed or used without permission. Data privacy is concerned with the ensuring that individuals have control over their personal information, and that is used only for the purposes for which it is it was collected. 
So data privacy is the correct way to handle, process, store, and use personal information. Often confused with security, confidentiality, and anonymity, etc. Uh, because these are the terminology we are using for digital security as well. So above mentioned terms may be connected with the data privacy, but they are not the same. So data privacy may include issues like uh, different standards. We are talking about regulations, uh, GDR, CCPA, HIPAA, ISO, uh, PCI DSS, uh, managing personal data, managing contracts, managing policies. So now let's discuss the difference between digital security and data privacy uh, digital security focuses on protecting digital assets from unauthorized access while data privacy focuses on protecting personal information from being accessed or used without permission digital security is concerned with the protecting the hardware and software system that the store and process data while data privacy uh, privacy is concerned with protecting the data itself so in today's world, the importance of data privacy is immense. It is considered a fundamental human rights. It is protected by common law and the constitution of some countries. It is an individual's right to freedom from the intrusion of others into their personal areas of life. Another difference between uh, digital security and data privacy is the scope of their protection. Digital security is concerned with protecting all digital assets including hardware, software, network, while data privacy is concerned with the uh, protect, uh, protecting only personal data. It is also important to note that while digital security and data privacy are different concepts, they are closely related. Digital security is a prerequisite, which is a very important factor for you to note. Digital security is a prerequisite for data privacy. So if you are going for data privacy, you need digital security to secure your digital landscape before you are start protecting and talking about data privacy. As without pro uh, proper digital security measures, personal data is at risk of being accessed or stolen by unauthorized parties. So in today's digital world, digital security and data privacy are more important than ever before. Cyber threats such as hacking, phishing, malware attacks are becoming more sophisticated and personal data is increasingly being collected and shared by companies and organizations. So uh, we, we, we are used to uh, click next, next, next and accepting all of the uh, privacy policy uh, from the different apps and companies and websites without knowing to know what are the rights uh, we are providing to them to collect our information. So it is essential for individuals and organizations to understand the importance of digital security and data privacy and take appropriate measures to protect themselves. So to conclude, digital security and data privacy are different concepts that are closely related. Digital security focuses on protecting digital assets from unauthorized access, while data privacy focuses on protecting personal data from being accessed or without, uh, used without their permission. Both concepts are essential in today's digital world and should be taken seriously to ensure the safety and integrity of digital data and personal information. So as we know that digital security is a set of tools and processes to secure your online identity, data and other assets. While data privacy cannot be initiated with, without having the digital security in place, so they work uh, hand in hand together. However, data privacy is the correct way to handle the process and store to use personal information. It is considered as a fundamental human rights and protected by law. So I think uh, I was very quick today to finish almost all of these slides. However, uh, this is giving me a chance to speak further about on the same topic uh, and the issues we are facing in the industry in terms of data privacy or in terms of their digital security. So usually uh, the awareness, in my opinion, is the biggest issue. We, due to lack of awareness in our society and corporate world and the individual basis, we are 
intentionally and unintentionally breaching uh, data privacy most of the time. So awareness is the key. The uh, education is the key where we need to aware our users. We need to aware our corporate staff. We need to aware our uh, about our students and individuals even at home. Uh, what are their rights? What is the data privacy concept and how we can protect our information? Uh, there are multiple reports. One of the report recently been issued by Guardian which consists 800 pages of only one user. So you can understand that how much digital footprint uh, we are utilizing and how much data we are leaving behind once we are using any platform uh, on the social media or on the digital space. And we don't know uh, how corporates and other companies are using this data. So this data is becoming the main product. This data is becoming the gold mine for multiple organizations. So we need to be very much, uh, very much well aware about the uh, consequences of having breaches in the data privacy. Uh, other hand, we need to be ensure that not only that data, our entire digital space is very much protected uh, properly through different tools in place. So I believe that's it from my side today, Shilpa, I hand it over back to you. Thank you so much, Faisal, for an informative session and our attendees share the same sentiments. Uh, if you are interested to learn more about our program, do let us know in the poll that's going to be conducted now. Let us know your preferred mode of training and we will reach out to you shortly. Uh, Faisal, shall we start with the Q&A? Yeah, please, go ahead. Okay, so our first question is, which tools are best used for digital security and data privacy? In general, uh, there are multiple tools available in the market for the digital security and data privacy as well. Where we are talking about digital security, we are not talking about only one component of the digital space we are talking about end-to-end -end, uh, space of the digital landscape where we are talking about firewalls we are, we are talking about uh, multiple other components of your infrastructure platform and uh, the service application side so there are multiple tools for each components available in the market and uh, uh, there are multiple proprietary tools based on the vendors as well so having said that i'm not uh, buys to any vendor so I am not going to name any tools but there are hundreds of tools are available uh, Gartner doing the uh, magic quadrant for each of the tool as well so we can see that tool from digital security perspective from uh, data privacy perspective similar to data security there are multiple tools available the importance of the data privacy where we uh need to have tools especially is the data classification and data loss uh, prevention so we need to more focus on the tools too as a dlp and as a data classification to have in place in our corporate sector where we can pro, uh, protect our data being leaked protect our data being lost uh prior to having impact on our business thank you Faisal. Our next question is, where does one interact with the two aspect career-wise? I believe as, as, as we discuss uh, today that both are work hand in hand. So career-wise, uh, both are critical. Uh, if, if you are the process-oriented person and you uh, like to having the standards and regulations uh, preparation, then you that data privacy is much better as a career choice for you. Uh, however, if you are more into the technical uh, side of uh, your uh, abilities, then I would prefer the career-wise digital security is much, much higher for you. So it based on the individual capacity and based on the individual uh, preference, uh, but both are critical, crucial uh, career objectives in your career so you can prefer based on your own abilities 
Thank you, Faisal. Our next question is by Suman. Why is the data of an average person valuable aside from targeted advising or financial fraud if they are not a national security threat? So as we uh, as we discussed earlier as well, so that data itself becoming a gold mine. So average person data could lead to many many uh, impact and uh, multiple other threats, which doesn't matter that it's national security threat or not. Uh, for the individual perspective, uh, privacy perspective, the, this data shouldn't be uh, used somewhere else without their permission from data privacy perspective. From data security perspective, there are multiple data which is related to the organization corporate. Uh, it shouldn't be used or misused somewhere else. So irrespective of this is national level issue or this is individual level issue or this is corporate level issue, uh, the data is the goal. So where we need to protect uh, that important and critical assets. Thank you, Faisal. Our next question is by Ankush. Uh, can you please give some example of data privacy and digital security in real life? Data security and digital security, I think uh, both are same. So data security is basically sub, sub of digital security where we are talking about entire digital uh, life. So entire cyber security is running on the uh, most of the time is running on the digital security. Uh, so if we are talking about the examples of digital security, we are talking about uh, multiple tools we are using to protect our mobile uh, uh, phones. We are protect, trying to protect our laptops. We are trying to protect our uh, any other devices and gadgets uh, before communication. We are protecting from what? We are protecting from hacking, phishing, malware, or any uh, unwanted or unauthorized access to our device. So once we start thinking about protecting our assets, digital assets, then digital security or data security come into the picture uh, where we apply multiple tools and multiple controls in place to protect that data. Thank you, Faisal. Our next question is, what does digital security look like in the metaverse? So metaverse uh, still is the is the booming phrase we are using everywhere at the moment, and still most of the corporates, most of the organizations are reluctant to use this metaverse because of the cybersecurity and digital security issues linked with the metaverse. So metaverse is one of the great concept we have at the moment in the market it is going to uh, bring down our most of the operational cost which is true but uh, side by side there are so many security concerns uh, with this concept need to be addressed which is not yet addressed and many organizations are working on that at the moment to address those uh, concerns with the metaverse so Yes, future is there. We are going towards the metaverse. Everyone will be, we are going to use uh, in very near future. However, the security will be much, much improved. Uh, from IoT perspective, we are already uh, start maturing our most of the tools and controls in place. But uh, from metaverse perspective, it's still there. Uh, I, I can see there are two or three more years needs to be there to say that yes now metaverse is secure and now we can uh, start utilizing commonly in individual capacity or in corporate world perspective thank you faisal for answering that question our next question is how can blockchain enhance data security and privacy in web 3 era so this is very interesting. Blockchain uh, itself is one of the most secure process uh, there where we are talking about multiple blocks are building uh, with each other. So it is nearly impossible to break or temper that block. So it is pretty much secure. Uh, so in my perspective, 
block by utilizing the blockchain uh, within the Web3 space is going to be much much more secure uh, process in near future. However, still there are many research going on, and we are still expecting few new products will be on the way by utilizing such technology. Thank you, Faisal. Our next question is by Ankush. Is digital security sufficient to protect data? This is a little bit difficult question because in my opinion, yes, digital security is sufficient to protect data. However, uh, there is a human intervention in between where we cannot say 100% is sufficient to protect data until unless that human which is near to impossible to see someone's intention uh, what is their intention to protect their data but this is the way we mitigate the risk this is the way we say that as much as control possible to protect our data and information uh, being theft however i would say 90 percent yes 10 percent is still uh, it's not sufficient to protect it Thank you, Faisal. Our next question is by Mohammed. How is data privacy maintained in areas of AI and chat GPT? So artificial intelligence currently uh, being rolled out very heavily. Most of uh, the sectors of the corporate world uh, it depends on the country by country, by the way. But uh, other side, chat, chat GPT grow in few weeks where other platforms grow in few years. So that is the big example where we can see the such growth. But now the question is related to with this growth, are we going to breach the data privacy? or are we going to compromise the data privacy by having such growth? In my opinion, yes, we are compromising few of the data privacy issues with such growth by overlooking that aspect. However, at the moment, this is, I would not say it's running in the full or mature environment, chat GPT or AI. At the moment, they are running as, beta version if not beta version as soft launch at the moment and still it's under the machine learning mode and still we are learning the consequences of such system in place so you will have this answer in next few months that how secure is the chat gpt in terms of your data privacy because if chat gpt can gather the information from billions and trillions of data available on, over the internet uh it can bring from the secure place and it can bring from non-secure place as well thank you faisal for answering that question our next question is how does digital security improve overall security and protect against breaches i think this is the similar question uh, which being asked earlier that uh, how much digital security is protecting the data so the answer is the similar that digital security is definitely improving and helping to secure the information or assets available on the digital landscape uh, it depends corporate by corporate it depends sector by sector uh, it depends the regulator by regulator as well. In European side of the world or in North American side of the world, the regulations are a little bit different for each of the sector. If you are talking about the financial sector in, uh, or for example, FinTech, so Europe is much more ahead than any other part of the world because they adopt this uh, concept long time back and they are mature enough and they have very good laws and regulations in place uh, so digital security in that 
area is much, much more easier uh, by having the supporting laws and regulations in place. Other side, <coughs> North American market is still very vague where we are talking still, they are not open for the open banking. Uh, we are talking about Middle East and our Asia side. Uh, we are trying to catch the train. We are ahead of North American market, but we are behind the European market. So it depends which part of the world you are, which regulations you are utilizing, which policy you are utilizing. utilizing. Uh, then that will define how much your digital security can protect your data. So if your digital security uh, is in one part of the world, we cannot say the same will be applied on other part of the world. However, it looks weird that technology can be used anywhere, but uh, it also having multiple other factors like the cost of doing business, like the cost of afford affordability. So banks in uh, our part of the world can afford something, but banks in Europe side can afford much better than that and Middle East can afford something else as well. Thank you, Faisal. Uh, we'll take last two questions for the day. Our next question is, what tools or classification mechanisms can one deploy to protect corporate data? Uh, again, this is the question where I need to name some of the vendors, which I'm always trying to avoid by using any vendor name. However, there are multiple tools available for the data classification. Uh, sorry, but I need to take few of the examples like Titus is one of the good solution where they are utilizing all of the standards of the GDR, GDPR and ISO and PCI DS and the HIPAA uh, under that data classification tool where you can customize based on your which standard you are following. Uh, so Titus is one of the good uh, tool uh, I have seen though there are other tools like uh, uh, other vendors which are also having very good solutions. I will not going to name it. Uh, so there are multiple tools available. Thank you, Faisal. Our next question is, what is the thin line between digital security and data privacy? It's always very difficult to balance this thin line. There is a thin line between both. And as uh, we discussed earlier during my presentation as well, the digital security is the prerequisite for the data privacy or data uh, security if we are seeing in other way. So if the digital security or data security is not there, it will be uh, almost difficult to have a data privacy in place. Uh, so that, as I said earlier in during my presentation, they work hand in hand and the, the balance between both needs to be there in order to have well secure environment in place. Thank you so much, Faisal. Thank you again to our wonderful speaker for answering those questions and for the great presentation and knowledge shared with the, our global audiences. It was a clear pleasure to have you with us and we are looking for more and more sessions with you. Before we conclude this webinar, uh, Faisal, would you like to give a small message to our audiences? Thank you, Sherpa. Thank you, ECCU, and uh, having me on Cyber Talks again. Uh, I think this is my second time I am here to discuss about different aspects of the cybersecurity. Uh, previous one was more related to the career. Uh, for the cybersecurity for the students perspective, but I think this time we have more people uh, available from corporate uh, side as well. However, I believe Easy Console is one of the leading uh, authority in, in, in my opinion is authority who is providing very useful tools and courses and uh, content for the cybersecurity in the market. So I, uh, I'm sure you are going to enjoy these webinar sessions 
having in play, uh, arranged by the cyber under the cyber talk umbrella by eccu and the uh, ec council and i'm sure you are uh, enjoying the courses available and offered by the ec council uh, the important is that awareness is the key as i explained earlier uh, if you are well aware then you can secure you can protect all of your assets either digital and non digital thank you everyone thanks for your time today thank you so much faisal for this message to our audiences before we end the session i would like to announce our next cyber talk session introducing novel technologies for effective threat hunting which is scheduled for 7th march 2023 this is a panel discussion by michael scott vegan short and ann hartey to register for this session please do go visit our website www.eccu.edu/cybertalks the link is given in the chat section hope to see you all on 7th march with this we end the session you may now disconnect your lines thank you thank you so much faisal thank you everyone take care yeah bye bye